recharging mode. Charging start. So there's that. I've never actually owned a robot vacuum before. So this is a first for me, not only owning a robot vacuum, but also reviewing a robot vacuum. Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend, and hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. What's up guys, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I am talking about the Tesvor Robot Vacuum X500. Now, robot vacuums aren't necessarily a new thing, but I've never had one before, and I was actually kind of interested in the technology. Mainly, I wanna know just exactly how smart a smart robot is, because I have my doubts. But before I jump into anything else, an official introduction. This is the Tesvor X500 Robot Vacuum. It comes equipped with smart mapping technology controlled by an app on your mobile device and has a self-charging feature. You can control the device with Alexa or Google, and you can schedule cleaning. With fall prevention and anti-collision built into it, it is supposed to give you worry-free cleaning. It utilizes Wi-Fi for connection, a 2.4 gigahertz signal, or you can use a remote. Has deep cleaning options. It is 2.9 inches tall and says it can do up to 1,600 square feet worth of cleaning off of a single charge. Tess Vore. Never actually heard of the company before, but there are a bunch of different robot vacuum cleaning options out there. It's just a matter of whether or not do they actually pick anything up? Do they actually work? I gotta be honest with you. I never really thought that they picked too much up. In fact, I think I see stuff in there, but I actually don't really know. So we're going to find out today exactly how much it can pick up off of one charge, which might be super embarrassing to me. Yeah. But either way, you have to begin with actually setting up the robot to work with your app. And setup is actually really simple. It's a matter of downloading the WeBack software. It's what it's called, WeBack. Powering on the device, which by the way, I do want to say one quick thing. You see all this? This little white stuff right here? Yeah? Yeah? That's not because there's stuff on it. In fact, it ruined my B-roll, but it's because Charging the... Charging starts. It's because the paint came off. Pretty much they put a sticker that you have to remove that does not unstick completely. It's not an easy pill. So I took alcohol to it and I got a little white stuff on there. I'm like, okay, I'm not getting this off with alcohol. So then I got Goo Gone and that apparently stripped the paint because Goo Gone is amazing and the paint on this is not. So there, yeah. But either way, setting this up with the app is super simple. It actually creates its own Wi-Fi network for you to connect to after you launch the app, and that allows you to go through, configure it, tell it what Wi-Fi you want it to connect to. That way you can see the status and control the robot vacuum from your phone or a mobile device like an iPad or an Android tablet or something like that. And once you have everything set up, that's where you have basically total control, just right, right from your phone which is pretty cool. I mean, you can still do some stuff here. You can press the little button, tell it to do things, or you can use the remote. It actually comes with a remote, which again is interesting. Makes me kind of wonder if I had to set up the app or if that was just kind of like a bonus because I kind of think this actually does everything without the app, just in case you don't want to do that. But the app actually allows you to do things like, you know, set the fan mode, set up scheduling, view the map. That is actually, it's like a little smart mapping feature this thing has so it knows where it's been. It's decent, but you know, I'll get to that in a little bit. And it gives you stats like how much power you have remaining, how many square meters it has cleaned, and cleaning time, which is three feet. I don't know what that means. 
Now the fan actually has two different modes. It's a normal mode and then a high power mode. I of course used the high power mode in my demonstration to see just exactly how good it was because I wanted the maximum sucking capacity demonstrated in this video. Cleaning appointment setting. And I actually just found that you can set a schedule right from the remote. So you don't really need the app at all. Smart cleaning mode. Recharging mode. It technically it's charging, but it was uh, it was kind of slick on my table, and I, I almost for a second thought I was about to fall off. So that would have been funny. So the remote is actually definitely very advanced. I mean, you can tell it to go charge, you can tell it to smart clean, you can change the fan functionality, you can set schedules, edge cleaning. I mean, it's got a lot of different features to it. It looks like you can probably move it manually, maybe. No. Okay, look like you could, but. But the thing I love about the app is that it's just, you can control it from anywhere because you create an account, you log in, you can see the status of the robot itself. So that actually comes in handy if you're trying to figure out if it's stuck because it does get stuck. And I don't know if it's all robot vacuums, but this one specifically got stuck about three different times, the first and only time I used it to clean. And for my cleaning test, I pretty much just cleaned upstairs, a combination of hardwood floors and carpet. Although I, ha I have to say that this thing says it does okay on thin carpet, and that's pretty much what I have. I don't really have super fluffy carpet, so uh, I can tell you it works really well on my carpet. I just don't know if it would do any good on fluffier carpet or deeper carpet. Just my carpet just happens to be perfect for it. What I can say though, is that when it goes from a hardwood floor over to a rug, it likes to get stuck. Most of the time it'll stop and it'll catch itself. It'll turn around and go away, but it definitely does not like going on top of the rug and it got stuck on it at least twice. Seems like sometimes when it hits it from just the right angle at just the right speed, it'll actually make it up on top or halfway up on top and then it gets stuck. And I guess my rug is pretty fluffy. So, I mean, that would be considered deep carpet. And you know, it proved that it's not good at deep carpet. But back to my testing, I ran it upstairs and what I wanted to do was, was just see what all it could pick up in one total charge. A little disclaimer, I did run it maybe an additional two to three minutes to get some different footage and different angles just for the purpose of this video. But for the most part, about 98% of this statement is true. Everything that I'm about to see, what it has today is all off of one charge and mostly one run. Mostly one run. That's that's kind of a key phrase, really, because you have the smart mapping technology. It shows up on the app. It shows everywhere that it's been. It builds a nice little map of everything that it's been doing. The problem is, is that once it gets stuck, you have to lift it up and kind of put it back into place or move it or whatever, and then start it back over. So in the sense of smart mapping, knowing where it's been, it, that resets everything. So I may or may not have cleaned some areas two or three different times just because I had to get it unstuck and restart it. To be fair here though, I was going from a hardwood floor to a pretty thick rug. So I kind of understand. I mean, it was just, it needed a lot of clearance to actually get on top of that rug, not to mention actually vacuum that rug. Two, one of the times it got stuck, it actually dragged a power cable that I had laying around underneath the couch. So. It got stuck in between that because it turned around and got on top of it. It's that was totally my fault. You, you just you have to pick up before you let this clean because it will suck anything it can. And <clears throat> if the power cable's in the way, it does not care. And the fourth time it got stuck because two of them was on the rug was actually because it went into a room and then was cleaning and then it shut the door on itself. So it was just pounding around in the bathroom. Could not figure out how to get out. <laughs> It was stuck. It, it can shut doors, but it's not very good at opening doors, apparently. So I ran it all on one charge. It may or may not have vacuumed some things more than once. But this is the size of, oh wow. So, th so th this is the size that it has to hold stuff. And this looks absolutely full. 
actually. Um, okay, so just to get a better view of this, this is everything it got in one charge, which is a little gross, actually. I think I see a pumpkin seed in there, but I don't know where it got a pumpkin at. I've never eaten a pumpkin. That's a little gross. I'm gonna... So yeah. Recharge it, no. Okay. So in the container that so in the container that actually captures all of the crud that you didn't know you had on your floor, uh, you actually have an air filter, an air filter that you can swap out. It does come with one extra air filter on the bottom of this vacuum. It actually has a couple of different spinny thingies. I, I knew the word for it, but now I can't think about it. But these spinny thingies help clear out stuff that's like in the in the cracks and against the wall, stuff like that, and it helps push everything towards the middle. That way it can, oh, that's gross too. That way it can, you know, vacuum everything up as needed. So one little thing though, is you wanna make sure you put the spinny thingies on right because it's labeled left and right. And if you put them on wrong, it may or may not twist itself up and not work right. I'm not saying that I totally did that and ruined one of my spinny thingies. I'm just saying you could if you did not pay attention and or read the user manual and you just tackle things without reading user manuals and you think you can figure it out, but then you break one. So don't do that. And that's pretty cool because it helps clean it up. So the options you have are smart cleaning where it makes its own map. It kind of goes around. It'll visualize the map for you on the app and tell you where it's been unless you have to reset it. But either way, the smart cleaning is the primary function or at least the primary thing that I use. You could also use spot cleaning, which means you set it down until it's spot clean. It does like a little circle and it'll just clean as it says in a spot. You also have edge cleaning, which actually I don't, I don't think I ever tested edge cleaning, but I'm gonna assume by the name it cleanses the edge. And then you have the manual mode, which you can actually go in here and, as you would imagine, manually control it. I tried, for the purpose of this video, to make it fall. I really did. It says it has fall prevention. It says it cannot fall. I wanted to test that out. It will not fall, which is something that I noticed when I was cleaning it. I was trying to see if it would fall down the stairs. I was kind of kind of a little hoping it would just because it would have made really great video, but it never actually fell down the stairs. So fall prevention, totally thing, totally works. I'm impressed by how it doesn't kill itself. A little let down because, you know, robots destroying themselves are more entertaining than robot not destroying themselves but do the way it works. So, you know, that's cool. Uh, one thing I do like though, is that this is only 2.9 inches tall. So three inches tall, it can fit under most, it can fit underneath the most couches, including my own, although it did get stuck with the whole wire thing, but that's relevant. So it allows somebody to maintain the layer of dust that may or may not accumulate underneath your couch. If you don't lift your couch up and or move it when you vacuum or clean or sweep or whatever, it allows you to kind of maintain that area so it doesn't get that bad. The only thing that I really don't like about it that, that probably bugs me, and I don't know if this is true for all other robots out there, but the only thing I don't like is that I can't tell it not to go somewhere. Like I can't say, stop trying to go on the rug, you dumb robot. It, it doesn't let me do that. On this little thingy, it creates a map, but as soon as you have to pick it up and reset it and tell it to go again, the whole map creation thing resets. So it loses where it was and it doesn't know if it's cleaning another area again. And there's no way for me to create a boundary or any kind of like a fence or perimeter or something telling it, hey, avoid the rug. Just don't try to go on top of it. I don't know if more expensive robot vacuums have the option to do this. All I know is that I cannot do it with this. What I can say though, is that I know that this base, just based off of my testing, this is all how it connects. This is all uh, driven by infrared and it uses its smart mapping technology to 
kind of sort of know where it came from. So it'll kind of go to the same area where it came from, and then it'll use the infrared from the base along in, co in combination with the robot to line itself up. And it is actually pretty good at it, really. The first and only time I ran it all the way to completion, it was actually in my bedroom and I, it was going very, very slowly and it kept saying it was low on battery and it was trying to find its way out. And I really thought that it was not going to make it. But lo and behold, it did. It, I have no idea how because I reset the robot a few times and it was not starting off at its base and it still made it to the bedroom and still somehow made, it, made its way out. Although I can say that it was more of like a go back in a general direction, kind of sort of where it started, and then it just kind of aimlessly moves around until it captures the infrared lineup from the base itself. At least from when I was watching it, that's kind of how it seemed to work. And then you have scheduling. And this is a, one of those things, I can go in here and I can add a schedule and I can repeat this to where it does it on a certain time every single day if I want to. I have the option to set it from uh, ex uh, executing it every day on the weekdays, on the weekend, or looks like a self-defined option where I, I can I can pick the days where I want it to uh, start cleaning and then I can set the time for those days. So that is one option I haven't used, mainly because I just wanted to see what this would pick up with one charge. So yeah, now I think I'm just gonna keep it up there and, and run it occasionally, you know, just because it did pick up quite a bit. It was a little gross. The only other complaint that I don't like is that I cannot use this with Siri, which is a little bit of a letdown because you can use it with Alexa, you can integrate it with Google, but you cannot use it with Siri. And I would have loved to be able to say, you know, hey Siri, clean my stuff. And it just started doing its thing. But I can't do that because it doesn't have that, that Siri integration. I don't have an answer for that. I know you don't. That's the point. So I guess this boils down to this. This is my first robot vacuum. And I was kind of excited because I thought it'd be kind of cool to have, you know, what they tout on their Amazon page, a worry-free cleaning experience where you just set it, you forget it. And then, you know, you might have to go in and empty it out every once in a while, but still it just kind of does its thing and it automatically recharges itself. And that's it, it's a worry-free thing. Only thing I can say is that with my current setup, even though it can transition from the hardwood floors over to the carpet floors in the bedrooms perfectly, it can transition from the hardwood, the, having the divider onto the tile floors perfectly. All of that works great, except for the rug. So for me, as far as a worry-free cleaning experience, I don't have that. Personally, if I were to remove the rug, it would be able to bounce around. It has this little detection thing on the side to where when it hits something, it's like a bump and it's like, okay, don't go there. So it'll back up and turn and, and it'll map itself. It'll find its way around the rest of the house. And it seemed to have done a pretty thorough job, at least according to the smart map that it created on the app itself. So it seems like it works pretty good, except for my rug. That's the only place that it has a problem with. So kind of makes me want to get rid of the rug a little bit. Okay, maybe, maybe not, I, I'm just saying, I should get rid of the rug. I really just wish I could create a fence, say that, you know, this area is off limits. I don't know if that's a possibility on other ones, but it would be nice if that was a feature. I can understand though why it's not a thing. But either way, for me, this could be a good device for when I get home, I just wanna say, okay, go ahead and clean, or even set the schedule to clean, you know, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, when I'm actually at home. So just in case it does have a fault and I have to go up there and reset it or move it, I will be available to do that. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And I don't, I don't have to push a vacuum around or sweep, which is also pretty cool. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. I'm actually, I have another robot to check out. Uh, it's funny, I got almost these two emails for these two different robots probably within, I don't know, an hour of each other. And they look like completely different robots, but obviously they do the same thing. So if you have any questions or something you would have wanted to see in this video, post it down below. It might make it into my next robot vacuum review. And I only have one more. I'm just this was a curiosity thing for me. But of course, the links to this robot will be in the description below so you can check out more specs and an up-to-date pricing for the robot. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe below, and have yourself a good day.